Igneous rocks are common constituents in many sedimentary basins and seismic reflection profiles like this one can give a great insight into their geometry and stratigraphic significance. However, the presence of igneous rocks in sedimentary basins can generate significant imaging problems because they generally have higher seismic velocities than the other materials, in other words the sediments, in those basins. So I'll have a look at some of the imaging problems and how they can be dealt with through better seismic processing and then we'll have a look at how we might interpret the geology of igneous rocks as imaged on seismic profiles. So let's start off here in the Faroe Shetland Basin offshore in northwest Europe and we're looking at some legacy seismic data acquired by the company Fugro in the early 1990s and their best efforts in processing in the later part of the 1990s. Uh, so let's just have a look at the image that we can see. Well at the top there is the seabed and then at around uh, three seconds, two-way time, is a really prominent reflector here, which is a bottom simulating reflector of diagenetic origin. It's the so-called opal CT transition, where amorphous silica from diatomans is on its way through diagenesis to become quartz in the form of chert. So that's the opal CT transition, and it essentially tracks the seabed because it's very temperature sensitive, and temperature increases with burial depth. Okay, well, let's continue down in our profile, and then between about four and five seconds is a discontinuous set of high amplitude reflectors through here, which represents the top of a layer of basalt. Beneath that high amplitude layer, the seismic quality decreases markedly. You really have a hard time seeing anything in the deeper part of that section. Very obscure. So Fugro wanted to reprocess this legacy data. And they did this in the later part of the noughties. So as part of this reprocessing strategy, they wanted to find the top of the basalt layer, which they did using a magnetic survey. And then they maximised in their processing the retention of low frequency content. And when they stacked the seismic data, they increased the role of the long offset wide angle incidence between source and receiver. They also paid special regard to look for multiples that resulted from reverberations from reflectors below the basalt and the base of the basalt itself. And as a consequence, they were able to clean up their deeper part of the image to reveal structure that hitherto had been highly obscure. So careful reprocessing, knowing the velocity structure particularly, because they knew the depth of the basalt and approximately the thickness of the basalt from a magnetic survey, allowed Fugro to reprocess the data to reveal deeper structure. And here is an interpretation of this new image. So this is just a scene from their reprocessed profile. Let's go back to the original legacy and what this looks like on the profile and see what it looks like when it's reprocessed, revealing some of that deeper structure below the basalt layers. Okay, so now let's turn our attention to the other side of the world here, offshore northwest Australia, from the Browse Basin. And there's some structures in here that look pretty volcanic, and I'll just highlight them. So we've got on the right there, we've got what looks to be a sill, a volcanic body that generates a high amplitude in the subsurface. And there, at slightly shallower levels, in the middle of our image, is a volcanic cone. Notice that beneath both of these igneous bodies, the seismic image is degraded. And this is a common feature beneath high velocity bodies in seismic reflection profiles. Okay, so. What we can do now is to begin to think about the relative timing of these volcanic bodies and how they've impacted on the adjacent strata. Well, let's start up at the volcano and we can see that that's banked onto by these other reflectors. So we can see that the volcanic cone was an edifice that stood proud of the seabed and that subsequent sedimentation has just banked onto and eventually buried it. Notice that the volcanic cone has a near perfect form, so it never poked up above sea level because otherwise its top would have been planed off by erosion at the coastline. Okay, so let's go to another profile. 
So here we have another part of the browse basin. Notice that in the deeper part of the section, we've got that discontinuous dish-like structure, which has a high amplitude, which represents presumably some kind of sill. And that at the end of the sill, there's this little cone, which may have been erupted from the end of the sill, breaking out um, at the surface to have an eruption. And finally, let's go to this profile, which shows volcanic cones and sills again. So let's do a more complete interpretation of this one. We can identify the cone structures in here, and these rest upon a high amplitude package of reflectors that we can trace out in green here. At depth beneath this green package in the subsurface, we can pick out various high amplitude features like this, which presumably represent a discontinuous uh, sill system in the subsurface. Now it's tempting to think that these sills may have fed the volcanic structures above the green package there. Well, let's just think about their relative timing. And you can see that the green horizon above the sills is bulged like this. So it looks as if the sills have deformed the former seabed as they've inflated, jacking it up like this. And if we look to the side of that blistery type fold, we can see that the strata above the green reflector show growth indicating that the fold grew gradually and has been buried by the deposits which are characterized by that high frequency seismic signature above. But notice also that those reflectors onlap and bank onto the volcanic cones. So we have this sort of relationship when we zoom in. So the reflectors that show growth of the blister fold that is the surface manifestation of the sills at depth, are onlapping the volcanic cones. So the volcanic cones were there before the fold developed. Therefore, the volcanoes predate the sill complex. They're probably not fed by the sills. They're different ages. So the seismic stratigraphy allows us to work out the volcanic and igneous history of this part of the Browse Basin. So a very quick look at igneous rocks as represented on seismic reflection profiles. We've looked at the issues that they generate for creating good images, and we've also looked at ways we can interpret the geology by tying the igneous geology to the seismic stratigraphy of the surrounding stratal reflectors.